Tonight, a 26-year-old man is recovering from a car crash that killed three other young men. All were inside a speeding geo storm that slammed into trees in Bonnie Lake early this morning. The man who survived was the only one wearing a seatbelt. Some neighbors will not forget the horrifying images. I really enjoy coming to work every day. They're all, the days are always different, so you don't know what to expect. Some days I feel like I'm making a difference out here. Um, but there are other days where you, you don't even think you're making a dent in the problems that we have. Start aid. Start aid. She's bleeding out. Just relax, okay? I got aid coming for you guys, all right? Okay, ma'am. Where are you bleeding from? With that, where you're bleeding, okay? Hold pressure on it. Direct pressure. Anybody witness it? Blows down the HOV. Fire's gonna need to take it. I got three injuries. Safeco Field, Seattle, Washington. When all the tickets are sold, there are more than 40,000 screaming fans cheering for the Seattle Mariners. That's about how many people die in automobile collisions throughout the United States each year. And it's estimated that over half these people would have survived the collisions if they'd taken a few extra seconds to buckle their seatbelt before heading out. The roads of this country are paved with too many stories of tragedies that could have been avoided, that happen on all road types and during all times of the day and night. The fact is, most collisions occur within 25 miles of home. 80% of all serious injuries and fatalities happen in cars going 40 miles per hour or slower. The names and faces behind the statistics change daily. They might make a headline or two in the local newspaper, but for the family members, it's an ongoing trauma, a lifelong nightmare that could have been avoided. They're uncomfortable, they're ill-fitting, I'm short, I find myself adjusting them, and so I just don't wear them. Uh, well, what we had here was a, a seven-car rear-end collision, um, chain reaction. Uh, one vehicle in the front stopped for traffic, and then the person behind him was unable to stop. And as you can see, the, the minivan ran underneath the back of the uh, pickup truck. And if you look closely, you can see the passenger side rear tire of the pickup truck is actually intruding into the passenger compartment of the minivan. Luckily, the occupant in there was wearing her seatbelt and she's not injured. And matter of fact, there's not any injury in this collision at all. A staggering 3.4 million people are seriously injured in automobile crashes each year in America. 3.4 million. That's how many fans will attend home games in this stadium for an entire season. Scott Ruffin became one of those millions the day he chose to ride in a car without his seatbelt on. I was involved in an automobile accident. It was a rollover accident. Both me and my partner were ejected from the car. The car rolled over on one of the rolls. I was thrown from the car for a distance of up to 100 feet. I also incurred a closed head injury and was in a coma for 13 days. I broke my back, lumbar region 1 and 2 vertebrae. They had to put Harrington rods in it. I crushed my ribs, collapsed my lungs. It's easy to get mad and frustrated at stuff, but it's best just to rock and roll and keep things going. Uh, there's not enough time left to be angry about everything that happens to you, or to beg and cry, why me? Because you always wonder what would happen, what would I be, where would I be, how would things be going now if this hasn't happened? And that, that's just a constant question, is what if? I don't see where the state gets off telling me what I need to do to protect myself. That's not the state's problem. Basically, we know at this time is we're responding to a two-car blocking injury accident. We have two patients complaining of neck pain at this time. The patient is no longer going to Virginia Mason, but Harborview. A lot of times when you go to a car accident, there are what appears to be very minor damage to the vehicle, yet because the people aren't restrained inside, they impact the inside of the vehicle. You know, they're flying around the car because they're not restrained and they actually impact the objects and the edges of the vehicle. Neither the driver or the passenger were wearing their seat belts. So the passenger hit her head on something, probably the windshield, and is laying on the ground over there having some kind of seizures. Sister says she doesn't have any history of seizures, so the seizures are probably caused 
from hitting her head on the windshield because she wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Across the United States, 40,000 Americans die each year in automobile collisions. Law enforcement, paramedics, and other emergency medical responders, emergency room doctors, and nurses, these people all see firsthand the physical and emotional trauma that collisions cause. Trauma nurse Joanne Fairchild sees firsthand the horrible injuries that result when people don't wear their seat belts. I know in my heart that if the parents that we take care of with these severe brain injuries, spinal cord injuries, if they had really understood what that choice was going to do to their family members, they, they would have chosen to buckle up. And I've had people come to this clinic, no, the cops have anything better to do. No, they don't. If we really want law enforcement protecting us and our families, then the most important thing they should be doing is enforcing traffic laws because that's how we die. We're not killed by people we don't know coming into our homes in the middle of the night and murdering us. We are killed in our cars because we don't think it's important. We have the personal right to do whatever we want to and all that. Woodenville, Washington, an auto salvage yard, home to thousands of crashed vehicles. One person who spends a lot of time here is Rob Kaufman, federal crash investigator for the Harborview Injury Prevention and Research Center. For years, Kaufman has been involved in a federal research study called SIREN, or the Crash Injury Research and Engineering Network. Our main goal here is to get out and actually look at real world crashes and study actually how people are being injured in crashes. Uh, a lot of the work that the engineers are doing um, are really based on the crash test dummies. And what we're out doing is, is documenting real world crashes, seeing how people are being injured in and uh, crashes and use that data to help build the cars and make them safer for us to protect us if we uh, unfortunately be in a crash. And when you study the forces that are involved in a crash, um, just going 30, 35 miles an hour into a wall or into a tree, that's equivalent to jumping from a three-story building. And when you're in a crash, the seatbelt basically can manage that force against your body safely. It can reduce your risk of injury by over half and some of the data that we've been seeing is almost three quarters of the, of the risk of injury can be reduced by just putting your seatbelt on. A recent study in Japan estimated that drivers and front seat passengers are at a five times greater risk of dying in car crashes if the rear passengers are not wearing seatbelts. The most dramatic effect was seen in head-on collisions when backseat passengers are catapulted forward into the front seat and into the upper body and head of the driver and front seat passenger. The study estimated that the number of deaths could have been reduced almost 80% if backseat passengers had been wearing seat belts. I usually don't wear a seat belt when I'm driving around town. I'm not going very fast, not going very far, and, and, I, and I've got a, an airbag, so I think I'm pretty well protected. Some people feel that they don't need to wear a seatbelt because they have an airbag in the car. An airbag is a great safety device, but the design of the airbag requires that the person be secured in their seat by the seatbelt. Here's a vehicle that's a, a very large vehicle and it is a pretty serious frontal hit. And when you come around and look at the interior, you can tell this person was not wearing their seatbelt because it's locks in place and now you can't pull it back out of the seat. And, but when you look at all the, the injury patterns and, and actually the, the mechanisms here of the, of the person, there's a head contact up into the windshield with some hair, um, cracks to the dashboard. Um, the airbag does deploy and probably, you can see here the steering column's been hit probably with the chest and it's come loose. And then down below here, you can see, here's the contacts of one of the legs and you can see a contact of the other leg. So both legs are being hit very hard into, into the instrument panel along with coming up into the dashboard, face and head into the windshield, and then this person or, or driver f falls over to the side and you can see all the blood on the other bag and, and laid there until probably uh, medics arrived. So big vehicle and the integrity of the car is still very much intact. Um, if this person was wearing a seatbelt, none of these injuries would have ever occurred. We've seen the devastating effects of not buckling up but wearing a seatbelt incorrectly can also be dangerous. Some common misuses of a seatbelt are placing the lap belt across the abdomen instead of low over the hips, placing the shoulder belt underneath the arm, having the lap belt or shoulder belt slack. Well, when I come to an accident scene and I see someone injured, it just makes me think that if they had been wearing their seatbelt, this probably wouldn't have happened. So there I think they play a major part in saving lives in highway accidents. In Washington state, most people wear their seatbelt. 
If you're someone that doesn't, keep in mind that you could be pulled over and given a $101 ticket. You could even be ticketed for every unbuckled motorist in your car who is under the age of 16. People age 16 and older who aren't buckled up could get their own seatbelt ticket, even if they are not driving. Another uh, scary part of our job is when we do get to the scene of a, a collision and one of the people in the car says, oh, where's my buddy or, or where's my husband or where's my wife or you know, where's my children? And immediately when you look in the car, you don't see them around there. And that's, that's the, one of the worst feelings that you can have is to be at a collision scene and, and not be able to find everyone who's supposed to be in the vehicle. When someone chooses not to wear a seatbelt, we all pay for that decision and higher taxes, higher medical costs, and higher insurance premiums. On average, inpatient hospital care costs for unbelted crash victims are 50% higher than for people who buckle up. A 10% improvement in our seatbelt use rate reduces hospital costs in Washington State by $51 million each year. I don't wear seatbelts because they hurt across my collarbone when I'm driving. It's really uncomfortable. Um, a lot of people say a seatbelt makes you uncomfortable. Wah. You want to be uncomfortable, you want to sit in a chair, you want to be dead. The choice is yours. When you walk into a yard like this and see the, the thousands of cars and the, and the many lives that were affected by crashes, um, you hope that they all had their seatbelts on and survived this safely. Statistics show that if you live to the age of 70, you have a one in three chance of being in a major automobile collision in your lifetime. A seatbelt will cut in half your chance of dying in a collision. Stated more simply, odds are really good that for many of you watching this program, a seatbelt will save your life. Problem is, they only work if you wear them. I'm Jim Tobin. Okay, this is surgeries I was telling you about I was having. I had them two days ago. It's a laparotomy with bladder augmentation and sphincter replacement. I was on the table from 7 a.m to 4 p.m. I have three drainage tubes in me right now, counting this one in my nose, that is draining my belly because my stomach is totally shut off because they had to remove a port lower portion of my abdomen or my intestine to fix my bladder. It's uh, gonna be this way for four or five more days. I'm on pain meds all day and I have all these draining tubes. And like I said, this is a direct result of no seatbelt in a car. So maybe you want to think about it.